Hello and welcome to the Winterfall community. This tutorial will go over how to upload your avatar to VRChat for both PC and Quest. If you'd like to upload your avatar as a fallback avatar, I'll have a separate tutorial which I'll link in the description below. So before we get started, we're going to need to download a couple of things. If you don't already have it, you'll need to download uh, Creator Companion on the VRChat website and I'll put the links to all of these in the description below as well. So you can download Creator Companion here. Next up, you'll need VRC Fury, which you can download right here. You'll need the free version of the Poyomi Toon Shader, and that's this Unity package that's located right here. Then you'll need the FemK9 Unity package, which you can find in your Gumroad library. You can find that under the VRChat upload files right here. And if you'd like to download any of the extra materials, so that's the Fennec, Fox, Dire Wolf, and any of the different eye textures, you can download the extra materials Unity package here. If you purchase the clothing pack, you can download whatever clothing pieces you'd like to add to your avatar. And lastly, if you purchase anything else from my Gumroad, you can go ahead and download, download those now. Uh, I also have a section on my Discord for community-made assets that can be added to this avatar, so if you're interested, feel free to check those out as well. Once you have everything downloaded, you can go ahead and install Creator Companion and then open it up and it should prompt you to install the correct version of Unity for VRChat. Then you can hit Create New Project and then select Avatar and name your project. This is where your project will be created, so make sure you select a convenient location. Then hit Create Project. and then hit open project. Some of the stuff in this tutorial might take a little bit to load, so I'm gonna go ahead and speed through those sections. Once Unity opens up, you can start importing some of those packages we downloaded. I'm gonna start with BRC Fury. Next, I'll do the Poyami Tune Shader, then the MK9 Avatar package. Now the last thing I'm going to do is import any of the clothing pieces I want. So I'm just going to do some of them, but the process for adding them is the same for all of them. Alrighty, the most tedious part of the tutorial is done. Now we're going to be customizing your avatar and getting it uploaded to VRChat. I'm going to start off by opening up the FemK9 folder here. And then we'll open up the PC setup scene. If you just want to upload it for Quest, you can skip to this part of the tutorial. So double click on this, and then it should look something like this. There are two different avatars you can select from, from these two in the middle here. The only difference between these two is the hairstyle. So this one has the ponytail, and this one has the long hair. I'll be using this one here. If you purchase the clothing, you can head back into the assets folder. And I'll start off by adding the sweatshirt. So open up that folder. And these are the two prefabs. This one here is for the FemK9, and you can check to make sure that it says .FemK9. You're gonna be dragging this onto your avatar in the hierarchy. So it's these two avatars here. I'm doing long hair, so it should say .LongHair at the end. Drag that on, and it will be automatically added using VRC Fury. There's a little bit of clipping here with the body, but don't worry, that's gonna be fixed in game. Also, VRC Fury creates toggles for you in-game, so all of your clothing will be toggled off by default, and that means you can add multiple pieces of clothing that might be overlapping. Next up, I'm going to add the shorts, so it's the same process. Open up the shorts folder, find the one that says .femk9, and drag it onto your avatar in the hierarchy. Next up, I'm going to show how to change your textures. If you're okay with this default look here, you can go ahead and skip this part, but if you want to use any of the pre-made materials or you have your own custom textures, you can follow along now. So I'm going to start off by hiding these clothing pieces so you can see what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to toggle on Hail 1 by selecting it and checking this box here. I'll start off by showing how to use the pre-made materials, so if you imported that Unity package, open up the Extra Materials folder. And since we're doing the PC upload, you can open up this folder here. Let's start off with the body, so open up the body folder, 
And to change out a material, all you need to do is drag it onto the avatar. So let's do this fox material here and drag it onto the body. The eyes is the same process. There are a couple of different options for the eyes here. Some of them are emissive, so this little part of the eye here will be glowing. And then some of them are not, so just make sure you're selecting the one that you want. I'm gonna go with an emissive one, so I'll open up this folder here and then drag the material onto the eyes. Next up is the hair. So open up that folder and you'll see there are two different material types, one that says long hair, one that says ponytail. Make sure you're dragging on the right one. So we're doing the long hair here. I'm gonna drag on the one that says long hair. Now we're gonna skip this props one and go to the tails. This tail here that's fluffy is tail two. So I'm gonna hide that one for now. And this one here is tail one. So open up that tail one folder and drag it onto the tail. Let's hide this one. And then we can unhide tail two. Same process, drag that onto tail two. There's one material that is a little tricky to change and that's the props material. The props material includes the glasses, the neck floof, and the collar. So to change that, we're gonna open up this props folder here, select the body in the hierarchy, and there will be a materials tab. It might be closed by default, so just hit that drop down, and you'll see there is an element called dot props. Take a material and replace the dot props. And now it should be changed. I'm gonna revert this back to its default state and show how to apply your own custom textures. Now it's time to apply your own custom textures. Head over to your FemK9 folder, open up the materials folder, and let's start off with the eyes. I'm gonna to need to drag in your custom eye texture, select it, and we'll need to change a few settings. So you'll see Mipmap Streaming, select that, and then all textures and Unity import at 2K. So let's change our eyes to 512. And then this here is personal preference, but I'm gonna swap this to high quality and then hit apply. Select your material, hit unlock shader, drag your texture into this box here that says texture, and then lock that back in. Your eyes should not be changed, but if you don't see them changing, you can find your material here and then drag it onto your eyes. Let's do the body next. So there are two different body options here. There's this flat stylized shading and then there's a more realistic fur option. So you can choose which one you would like. I'm gonna go with this one here. Drag your body in, select it, and we're gonna hit the same settings, mip map streaming. This time I'm going to switch the size to 4K. And again, I'll do high quality. Select your material unlock it, drag it in, and then lock that back in. Let's do the props next. So the props include the glasses, neck floof, and collar. So we're going to do same thing again, drag in the props texture, hit streaming, I'll leave this at 2k, high quality, and apply. Select the material, unlock it, drag it in and then lock that back in. To make sure that this material applied correctly, you can select the body in the hierarchy and there will be a material here that says neckfloof.props. Select it and the material that you just changed should light up here. If it doesn't, all you need to do is grab your material and drag it onto this section here. The rest of the process is the same, so I'm just going to go through and speed that section up. The process is the same for the clothing, and I've also got a bunch of pre-made options. So if you head back into your assets folder, and let's unhide some of them, let's see the sweatshirt, 
If you go into the sweatshirt folder, you'll find a materials folder. And there are a bunch of options here. So you can just drag them on and pick whatever option you would like. The next thing we're going to do is change the look of our avatar using blend shapes. If you like the look of the avatar now, you can skip this part, but I'm going to show you how to switch it up a bit. So I'm going to start off again by turning off these clothing pieces, and then we're going to select the part of the avatar that we want to edit. So I'm going to start off with the body, and then there will be a section called blend shapes. Hit this drop down here, and you can scroll by the first few sections until you see a section called face edits. This is where you can start editing, and if you keep scrolling, you'll see a section called do not edit, and that's right here. These are all things that you can change in VRChat, so if you're uploading for VRChat, um, don't edit these because you can change them on the in-game menus. So I'm going to change how the avatar looks, so feel free to check out all the different options here. Once you're done editing the body, you can check out some of the other blend shapes. So for the hair, there are a couple of different options that you can play with. I'm going to make mine a little bit longer, but you can also make it straighter. And you can also change up the bang styles as well. Once you're done with the hair, the tails also have a couple of blend shapes. So this one doesn't have a ton, but the other tail option has quite a few. This next step is also optional, and it's for optimization using one of the built-in features from VRC Fury. So basically what it does is it removes all of your unused blend shapes upon uploading. So as you can see, there are a lot of blend shapes, so removing them will definitely help with your VRAM usage, and everyone around you will thank you for this. So to do this, select your avatar in the hierarchy, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and then hit Add Component. Then you're going to type in VRC Fury here and find the one that says Blend Shape Optimizer. If you want to keep your MMD blend shapes, you're going to need to add a component again and find the one that says MMD Compatibility and add that one as well. When you upload an avatar to VRChat, you need a thumbnail image. So if you don't already have an image you would like to use, you can take a picture of your avatar in Unity using this photo booth over here. So there are two different options for poses, and if you hit this drop down for the scene and then the photo booth, you can see the two different poses here. This one is pose one, and this is pose two. I'm gonna be using pose two. So you can turn off the parts of your avatar that you don't want to show. So I'm gonna turn off this ponytail right here and you can just click this eyeball button. And then you can select the body and apply any of the blend shapes that you already applied to your avatar to get them looking the same. I mentioned before that there was this do not edit section down here, but since this avatar is not being uploaded to VRChat, you can actually use any of the blend shapes in this section as well. We're now ready to upload the avatar to VRChat. To do this, head over to the VRChat SDK, hit Show Control Panel, and log into your account. Then go over to your Builder tab. And this here is where you can import your own custom image, or you can capture an image from the scene. So we're going to use our photo booth to capture an image from the scene. So go over to your avatar. And then because you can still see the hair, we need to go back over to our ponytail and uncheck this here so you won't be able to see it in the thumbnail. Once you're happy with it, hit capture. Then give your avatar a name. Make sure you have the correct avatar selected so if you're uploading the long hair, you can have that one selected, and if you're doing the ponytail, select this one. 
Then once you're all done with that, check this and hit build and publish. Now that you've uploaded your PC version, it's time to upload the Quest version. But first let's save. So to do that, go to file and then hit save. To find the Quest version, go to the FemK9 folder, open up the Quest folder, and then we're going to drag this Quest scene into the hierarchy here. Now let's hide our PC version so we can see things a little bit better. If you just uploaded the PC version, you'll probably still have your VRChat SDK tab open, but if not, you can find that under your VRChat SDK tab here and then hit show control panel. Then head over to your builder and scroll all the way down until you can select your platform. Click this and we're gonna switch this to Android just a heads up, this is going to take a little bit of time, so be prepared. Once it's finally done switching build targets, you can head over to your content manager if you plan on uploading this cross-platform. So what uploading it cross-platform means is that Quest people will be able to see your Quest avatar and PC people will be able to see your PC avatar. So to do this, you're going to find the avatar that you just uploaded, it will probably be right here at the top, and then hit copy ID. Then you're going to need to pick which up avatar you'd like to upload to Quest. So because of the Quest limitations, I've divided the avatar up into four different avatars based off of hairstyle and tail type. So I'm going to use this one here, and this is going to be long hair tail 2. So find that in the hierarchy and select it. And then we're going to scroll down to find our pipeline manager. So that's right here. And in the blueprint ID slot, we're going to paste that uh, ID that we just copied and then hit attach. Next up, I'm going to show how to swap out your materials to either some of the pre-made materials or your own custom textures. So I'm going to start off with the pre-made ones. So if you download the extra materials folder, head to that and open up the quest folder. We can start off with the body. And the only difference between the PC version of the textures and the Quest version is that the eyes for the Quest are merged with the body. And this is due to the limitation of the number of different materials you could have for Quest. So to change the body, we're going to find the material that we want and drag it onto the body. Same thing for the hair. Because we've got the long hair here, make sure you're using a long hair material. But if you're doing ponytail, you can use ponytail material. And this here is tail 2, so we're going to use the tail 2 materials. And then the only one that's a little tricky is the props, and that includes the glasses, neck floof, and collar. So to change that, we're going to go to the props folder. Find the avatar we're using in the hierarchy. So again, we're using long hair in tail 2. So click this little drop down here and select the body. There will be a material section here, and one of them will say M underscore props. We're going to choose the material that we want, so I'm going to do this one, and drag that into this section here. If you select it, the one that you just dragged on should light up. I'm going to revert this back to its default state and show you guys how to do your own custom textures. Next up is applying your own custom textures. To do this, head back to the FemK9 folder, Quest, Materials, and we'll start off with the body. Like I mentioned before in the pre-made materials, the difference between the Quest body and the PC body is that the eyes are now merged with the body material. And this is because there is a limitation on the amount of materials you can have for Quest. So if you exported your material out of Substance Painter, you're going to need to follow this super quick tutorial that I'll link up above on how to do that. But if you export out of Photoshop, you don't have to worry about that because I snuck in the Quest eyes on top of the Photoshop file. So drag in your Quest body texture. I'm going to select that and everything in Unity will import at 2K. We're going to leave the body at 2K because you can't have anything higher than 2K for Quest. Select MIP streaming and I'm going to swap this to high quality. There is a pretty common issue that people have where your Quest avatar can't be uploaded because it's over 10 megabytes, and that's what happens when you start adding some more pieces to this avatar. So if you're running into that issue, you might need to come back and switch this to a lower quality compression 
or switch this size to something a little bit smaller. For now though, I'm gonna leave it with these settings and then once you're done, hit apply. So there are two different fur shading options. There's this stylized fur, or you can do this more realistic fur style. I'm gonna do the stylized one. So select that material and then drag your quest texture into this spot. If for any reason you don't see your texture being applied to your avatar, all you have to do is take the material and drag it onto the body. Next, let's do the hair. So because we've got the long hair here, I'm gonna be changing the long hair material. So you can use the same texture as you used for your PC version for the rest of the parts. So I'm gonna swap this down to 512, high quality, and hit apply. Drag it in, and you should see it changed. Now we've got tail two here. So we'll go into the tails, find tail two. Drag in your tail texture. I'm going to put this at 1K. And then the last material that we need to change can be a little bit tricky, and that's the props material right here. What this includes is the glasses the neck floof and the collar. So to change this one, we're going to do the same thing and drag in our props texture, select it, and then select the same settings as before. And then to change this material, we're going to select the body of the avatar. So again, we're using the long hair tail two. So remember to select the correct one. So select the body. And then you'll see a section here called materials and there should be a material applied called M underscore props. Drag your props material onto the body and then select it. And the new material should be applied to your avatar now. If you'd like to add the clothing, you're more than welcome to. It hasn't been reduced for quest optimization, but you can add it and you can do this the same way that the clothing is added for the PC version. So if you'd like to add it, skip back to that part of the tutorial. The last bit of customization we're gonna do on this avatar is editing the blend shapes. To do this, we're gonna select the body in the hierarchy and make sure again that you're selecting the right body for the avatar that you're editing and you should see a section called blend shapes. Hit this drop down. You can scroll past all of these first sections until you find a section called face edits. From here down is all the things that you can add until you find a section called do not edit, which is this section right here. If you're uploading for VR chat, all of these are used in game and are on toggles in game and you can change them there. So you can just ignore that section for now and you can play around with anything in this section here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my avatar here look like my PC version and feel free to check out all of the different options because there are lots of fun things that you can do with this avatar. If you want to edit the hair or the tail, you can find the tail blend shapes all the way at the bottom here. And for the hair, to change that, select the hair in the hierarchy, and you should see all of the different hair options here. We're going to do one more thing to our avatar, and that's going to be for optimization purposes, using one of the built-in features for VRC Fury. So if you upload a PC version, we did the same thing. And basically what this is going to do is remove all of the unused blend shapes on your avatar, which will help a lot with VRAM usage. So as you can see, there are quite a few blend shapes, so we want to remove the ones that aren't necessary. To do this, select your avatar in the hierarchy, scroll all the way to the bottom, and hit Add Component. Search for VRC Fury, and we're looking for one that says Blend Shape Optimizer. So that's right here. If you want to keep your MMD blend shapes for the dance worlds, hit Add Component, and we're going to add the MMD VRC Fury 
component, which is right here, MMD compatibility. For now, ready to upload your avatar to VRChat. If you don't already have an image you'd like to use for your thumbnail, you can use the photo booth over here to create your own thumbnail. I've already done this for my PC version, so if you haven't already, you can go ahead and apply your textures to these avatars now and also the blend shapes if you'd like. So now we're going to open our VRChat uh, control panel again, head back over to your builder, and make sure the correct avatar is selected. So you might need to change the avatar. Um, I have the Femme K9 uh, long hair towel 2 that I've been working on, so make sure whatever one you've been working on is selected up here. So I already have my thumbnail from my previous avatar, but if you still need to make one, you can capture it from the scene or you can select a new thumbnail. If you have any issues, you can auto fix them here. Make sure your platform is Android. Check this box. If you need to, you might need to give your avatar a name. And then once that's all set, you can hit build and publish. As you can see, our avatar has been successfully uploaded to VRChat with our custom textures and blend shapes. If you added any of the clothing, you can go into the menus in the outfit section and toggle on any of the clothing you'd like to add. If you need any additional help, feel free to message me on Twitter, email, or you can message me on Discord. I also have a Winterpaw community that you're more than welcome to join. We do meetups and there's an awesome section for additional support and community-made assets. Thank you so much for watching!